Good morning, everyone. Welcome to What's Trans or Gay in PA for July 16th, 2021. We share news stories and events that impact the LGBTQ plus community in Pennsylvania. Our show is brought to you by the YouTube channel with more than 50,000 subscribers. Powered by Rainbow, starring Matt Haslam, provider of LGBTQ plus education for virtual classrooms in Pennsylvania and around the world. And by Aura Jewelry by Mary Moore, maker of fine quality, reasonably priced necklaces and other items. Check out her Etsy page for details. Today's show is also brought to you by One Hope Wines, blending traditional winemaking methods with modern techniques. Each exquisite bottle becomes a catalyst for change. Our top news story today. Kentucky has reached a contract deal as of Thursday to continue placing youngsters with a Baptist affiliated children's agency coming after the Democratic governor's administration removed LGBTQ anti-discrimination language that the agency steadfastly refused to sign. The agreement continues the state's long lasting relationship with Sunrise Children's Services which provides foster care, residential and therapeutic services to children and families. It serves some of the most vulnerable children in a state with consistently some of the nation's worst child abuse rates. Those contractual ties had been jeopardized by a cultural clash pitting religious beliefs against gay rights. But on Thursday, the state cabinet for health and family services said in an email it entered into the new one-year contract agreement to continue placing children with Sunrise. Sunrise's attorney, John Scheller, said the agreement includes language protecting his clients' sincerely held religious beliefs. It reflects what they had requested, adding that the agency is grateful that the Commonwealth has decided to follow the law after prolonged uncertainty. Officials with foster services agencies say that the disputed non-discrimination language would have compelled them to violate deeply held religious principles by sponsoring same-sex couples as foster parents. Sunrise is affiliated with the Kentucky Baptist Convention consisting of nearly 2,400 churches. That faith views homosexuality as a sin. Gay rights supporters said removing the LGBTQ inclusive language would sanction discrimination. Responding to the state's decision to keep contracting with Sunrise, gay rights advocate Chris Hartman said that it's disappointing and disheartening that they would allow the discrimination to continue. Hartman is the executive director of the Louisville-based fairness campaign. Kentucky Governor Andy Beshear acknowledged recently that the state agreed to remove the LGBTQ anti-discrimination language from the contract following a U.S. Supreme Court ruling. In the Pennsylvania case, the high court sided with a Catholic foster care agency that said its religious views prevented it from working with same-sex couples as foster parents. However, the advocate reported on June 17th that the U.S. Supreme Court ruling in Fulton v. City of Philadelphia was a narrowly worded one based strictly on language in Philadelphia's contract with a Catholic foster care agency, and that it does not establish a broad religious exemption from anti-discrimination laws. Despite the court's narrow wording in the Fulton case, Scheller had said the high court applied fully to the Sunrise dispute and warned that if Kentucky failed to follow it, the state would, quote, invite litigation, which the governor is sure to lose, end quote. Hartman on Thursday disputed that the Supreme Court ruling had a direct application and said gay rights advocates will keep pushing for the non-discrimination language in state contracts. 
we're going to continue conversations and continue advocating for no discrimination in any state contracted services with anyone for any reason, he said in a phone interview. We don't believe that the state's dollars should be utilized in the efforts of discrimination. Kentucky officials said Thursday that Sunrise agreed to refer any service applicants who identify as LGBTQ to another provider in good standing with the state's Health and Family Services Cabinet. Scheller previously said that Sunrise already offers to help steer same-sex couples to other child services agencies that are a better fit, in their words. Scheller has said that Sunrise willingly and gladly accepts LGBTQ youths and does not put children in conversion therapy, which tries to change a person's sexual orientation or gender identity. We will, as an organization, continue to investigate whether that is true or not. Like many other states, Kentucky contracts with private agencies like Sunrise for some of its child welfare services. Bashir's administration had set a June 30th deadline for Sunrise to sign a new contract, threatening to stop placing children with the agency if it refused. But the governor said recently that children were still being placed with Sunrise. In other news, a team of USA Today network journalists from five states won the Excellence in Multimedia Award from the National Lesbian and Gay Journalists Association for work on a 2020 video project that invited LGBTQ people to share their stories for National Coming Out Day. Asbury Park Press features reporter Alex Beza, who helmed the project, was named as the recipient of the National Award. This is such a remarkable honor, Beza said, in a year when a global pandemic had all of us feeling more separated than ever before. It was my hope that the National Coming Out Day project could bring us all closer together. A dozen editors, reporters, photographers, videographers, digital producers, a social media team, and an illustrator joined forces to document the coming out stories of members of the LGBTQ community. The story, published October 8th, a few days before National Coming Out Day on October 11th. And finally in the news, the year 2020 saw welcome growth in racial diversity of LGBTQ characters in films released by major studios, according to a new study by the advocacy group GLAD. But for the fourth year in a row, there were no transgender or non-binary characters in those films. The study released Thursday also found no LGBTQ characters in any of those films who are living with HIV or with disabilities. GLAD looked at 44 films released in theaters by major studios in 2020, which is a limited number due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Of those films, 10 contained LGBTQ characters. The films included Kajillionaire, Like a Boss, The Broken Hearts Gallery, Fantasy Island, Valley Girl, Freaky, The New Mutants, and Birds of Prey. This was an increase of 4.1% from the previous year, which is, after all, a decrease of 12 films overall. Last year's study looked at 118 films. GLAD counted 20 LGBTQ, LGBTQ characters in those films, a decrease of 50 in last year's report, again, attributable to the reduced sample size of films released in 2020 due to COVID-19 restrictions. Of the 20 characters, 11 were men and nine, 11 were women and nine men, making this the first time GLAD's tracking found more women than men in those roles. Especially concerning, Glad noted, was that for the fourth year in a row, there were zero transgender and or non-binary characters counted. 
The group renewed its call for increased transgender and non-binary representation and storytelling, especially in a political climate with anti-transgender legislation moving forward at a record pace. The report came two days after MJ Rodriguez of TV's Pose became the first transgender performer nominated for a major acting Emmy, a development hailed by GLAAD. A welcome finding was the increase in racial diversity of LGBTQ characters. Of the 20 characters counted, eight were characters of color, which is an increase of 6% from 2019. The Rundown will return on Monday's show. We'll be reporting live from the Pride Festival in Pottsville, Pennsylvania on Saturday, alongside Professor Pride of Powered by Rainbows. And be sure to tune in on Sunday at 1 p.m. when Rihanna Check, the first transgender candidate for the Pennsylvania Senate, will be our special guest on Pep Talks Uncut. If you have news or events you would like to mention on our show, send story ideas to info at paequality.com. For events, please allow up to one week prior to the event for us to include it on the program. Thanks for watching today. If you like today's show, give us a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to our channel. The, the subscription button's down there. Be sure to click it. Can, can you see me? Yeah, down there. Yeah, right down there. Yeah, click that. Okay. Tune in again tomorrow and we will have another edition of What's Gay in PA. Actually, you might want to wait until Monday to tune in because like I said, we'll be in Pottsville on Saturday and we look forward to seeing you again really soon. Have a great rest of your day and enjoy your weekend.